A comment got me thinking about the magnets used in these Hall Effect joysticks, really the magnets and the sensors. When I was rotating the two magnets in the joysticks I bought from Amazon, I just assumed the magnet poles were at the ends of the long dimension. It turns out they are, but I didn't do any tests to verify it. The magnets in both brands of joysticks seem to be the same. They measure 3.5 mm by 1.5 mm by 1 mm, with an indentation line on the back side at about the middle of the 3.5 mm dimension. They are very tiny magnets. There are of course six faces on the tiny little rectangular magnet, and two of them should be the magnet's poles. So why not use two of them and see for sure which two faces are the poles? There is a lot of friction on this silicon mat, but if moved close together they will snap in the end. And on something that doesn't have much friction, if I hold the one magnet, it will move the other magnet even though there is still quite a bit of distance between them. And then they snap together in the end. This is where it really would be nice to have a high speed camera. The best I can do is 120 frames a second. On this cardboard, it's slick enough that I can't really get the magnets to turn away from one another with the stick. But they always snap in the end at least in the 30 plus times I've tried it. Let me try with some tweezers holding the one magnet. They are stainless steel but are slightly magnetic, but I don't think that will affect the outcome any. Yes, that would look good at a thousand frames a second. For their size, they seem to be pretty strong magnets. And I think the poles are now solidly identified. Now which is the north and which is the south? That I will find out in a bit. Let me see if I can get the sensor and the PC board it's mounted on out of the plastic housing and without cutting myself. I'm going to need some way of holding the thing. Okay, I've got my aluminum tweezers mounted in a vise, so maybe it will hold on to it. I've got the hot air gun set to 550 degrees Fahrenheit with 30% airflow. I've got to say, this plastic must be a pretty high temperature plastic. It's not just melting away. Of course, if I had something to hold the leads a bit better, it would be easier. At the same time, I don't want to melt any solder on the PC board, so I won't up the temperature anymore. This air temperature should be high enough to soften most cheap plastics. Well, I've got most of it off the one side, and I don't think I damaged the PC board. I really was expecting this plastic to melt, but it's really holding its form. There we go. And I think the PC board is good. I can't see any damage, but I'll put some leads on it and test it out. Now that I have leads sorted to the pins of the sensor PC board, I can stick it in a breadboard. The top clip will supply 1.8 volts. The center black clip is ground, and the bottom red clip connects to the center pin of the sensor and goes to a meter. I'll turn everything on, and getting a bit over 0.9 volts so right at the same voltage I read when I tested the sensor before I removed the plastic, so I think it's undamaged. I'm going to use some hot melt glue to hold the magnet onto the end of a wooden stick, that way there is no metal involved that will influence the readings. This is how the magnet is positioned in the joystick normally, largest smooth face toward the hall sensor. Not sure about the pole direction as the markings I put on the magnet before I removed it have worn off. So in this arrangement, we can see the bipolar function of the hall sensor. With the magnet very close to the sensor, as the magnet is moved along the pole axis, the output will swing from near 0 volts to near 1.8 volts, depending on which pole is near the sensor. Of course, if the magnet is moved far enough away, the voltage will start to return to the neutral position. But this is how the joystick works, by moving the magnet from pole to pole over the sensor except in a slight arc motion instead of a linear line, but the result is the same. And the centering is achieved by shifting where the magnet rests near the midpoint between the two poles. Now I'm going to attach the magnet at one of the poles. I did mark the magnet and hopefully the mark will stay long enough for me to reverse the direction after this test. It's so easy to drop the magnet, I need some kind of marking to keep track of its direction. Even at quite a bit of distance, there is a small effect on the output, about the same kind of distance that the magnets snap together. And as the one pole is moved closer, in the case of this pole, the voltage goes to the maximum. And as the magnet is moved away, in either direction, the voltage moves closer to the 0.9 volt neutral value. 
Now if moved far enough, can see the voltage does go below the 909 millivolt neutral value. I believe this is from the poles field affecting the sensor from the backside, slightly more than from the front of the sensor. If this pole, positioned at the front of the sensor, is producing a maximum value, if it were moved to the back of the sensor, it would produce a minimum value. Now I will reverse the poles, and if things go as expected, the output will go towards zero when this gets close to the Hall sensor. And it does just as expected. If it gets close enough to the sensor, the output value drops close to zero. And just like the opposite pole, if moved far enough, the voltage goes above the 909 millivolt neutral value. I think this shows a certain symmetry in both the magnet and the sensor. Now if I rotate this magnet 90 degrees around the pole axis, it behaves the same way. Now it does alter the position to output value somewhat, and it seems to possibly increase the magnetic field that enters the backside of the sensor when the magnet is moved away from the sensor. But that probably has a lot to do with my alignment over the top of the sensor. I'm sure the actual Hall sensor element is a very tiny spot, probably in the center of the IC package. One more face to glue to. This time, it is the one millimeter by 3.5 millimeter surface that will face the Hall sensor and I would expect it to behave about like the magnet orientation that I started with. And it does seem to. Of course this orientation would make the joystick sensor part thicker, so no need to use it this way. And with the magnet moved down, the sensor outputs minimum. With the magnet moved up, the sensor outputs maximum. Now if I rotate the magnet 180 degrees, with the magnet up at the top, the sensor now outputs minimum, and as the magnet is moved down, the output goes up. Finally getting to the maximum. So by rotating the magnet, I have reversed the output of the sensor. This is what had to be done to one axis of those K-Silver joysticks that I ordered from Amazon. If I had a data sheet for this Hall sensor, could use it to determine which pole of the magnet is north, but I don't. Can't find any information on this Hall sensor whatsoever. But I do have the earth I'm standing on, a non-magnetic dish with a little water in it, and a small piece of expanding foam that will float. Also, I do know the approximate direction of true north. Really is amazing how far the magnetic field from these tiny magnets will affect one another. Just for reference, the width of the N is one inch. I think I remember doing something like this as a kid. It's still fun to do. Let me see if I can move it by hand. Wow, it really doesn't want to turn away from north. Again, that's impressive. I believe my arrow is pointed close to true north. Can see the magnet is pointed a little west. Now I'm pretty sure magnetic north is a little west of north in my location, so that is really what I would expect of the magnet. Let me mark north on the magnet, that way I can use it to mark the polarity of the other magnet. Just a little red mark on the one end. I don't know if that is static charge or surface tension. It sure wants to hang on to my finger. Got rid of the dish and the water, so now I'm limited to how big a mess I can make. This is the only pair of aluminum tweezers I have. I sure need to find me some more. Now I'll get the polarity of the other magnet. They should always stick together, north to south or south to north. And now to mark both of them as good as I can. For this Hall Effect sensor, the one from the orange Hall Effect joystick, a north magnetic pole facing the top of the sensor will produce an increasing output voltage. But it all depends on the sensor. The blue Hall Effect sensor from the K-Silver joystick is the opposite. The north magnetic pole will produce a decreasing output voltage. Really would be nice to find a data sheet on either or both of these Hall sensor ICs. Could be used in a lot of projects. And the fact that they operate down to 1.8 volts is nice. 
Anyway, it's always fun playing with magnets. Doesn't ever seem to get old. I bet there's 10 minutes of video of me pushing my little magnet boat around with the other magnet. Give it a try. It's fun. Thank you for watching.